All right. I had a question uh, brought to me by a student about section 13 or 313.1, um, how to access uh, various uh, C and C++ libraries. So the lesson is trying to um, show this library here. And um, it actually does a pretty good job, but I can see how people would get lost. So let's look at the example that they give us. Actually, let's back up a little bit. Let's let's go back and and let's imagine how uh, how we view variables. So, uh, and this ties in. So I'll go through this quickly because you guys have been using variables now for a couple weeks. But let me go through this real quick. Whenever you say a variable, what the computer says, build a box. And that box is going to be called X, because that's what we used here. So the thing is, is this is all the computer does. There's nothing in that box until you say, And then the number two is put into the box. All right. The same thing works for strings, characters. It doesn't matter. All right. So if we get rid of the, that stuff, what we have is a lot of uh, different items that we can use to manipulate the contents of the box. So if we are doing, so if we did this, int, um, how about a day? That tells the computer to make a box and call that box day. So instead of small, medium, large, like you would see printed on a box, um, the computer says there's a box in here called day and it can only hold integers so somewhere in your code you'll say day is equal sorry equal to two all right and so you put that in there at some point though your code doesn't remember what is in this uh, box. What kind of content is in this box? Especially if it's a more open type of container. Uh, day, when you see this code about 800 lines later, you don't remember if that is a string that holds the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You don't know if it holds a Julian calendar day. You don't know if it's part of a day, month, year. Because um, you can do that. Everybody's seen this at some point, I hope. So you could have multiple boxes in here with day, month, year. So you don't n remember what's in that box. So what they're trying to show you here is that there is a way to evaluate a variable or evaluate the contents of a variable, contents of the box, so that way you know what is in there. Um... So if we go down here, this is where they're doing an example for the first time. All right, so we go to 13.1, and the code here is pretty straightforward. So we created these chars, okay? And uh, we know what's going to go in there. A char it only allows uh, one um, character, uh, a single character. So we know there's no numbers. We know there's no um, symbols. We know that. However, that's not the point of this exercise. The point of this exercise is that char can hold anything in the ASCII um,
in the ASCII table because it stores it. It doesn't store the letter A. What it stores is the number 65. That's what a char does. So the thing is, because we know this, it can take any value, and you can play with this later. It, it's kind of fun um, to do that, but so the point of this exercise is, hey, what's actually in uh, that char? So we look at the code and it says char. So we're gonna create um, two boxes. One is called let zero. These are horrible names, by the way. You never use numbers in variable names. And the other one is let one. Um, the reason that they do this is for conciseness. So when you're doing uh, Zybooks here, a lot of what they're doing, they're trying to write to show you code that you can see on one page. So normally uh, this, this right here would be normally named something like letter zero and letter one. And the reason you do that is because there's too much interpretation when you abbreviate stuff. You can have 256 letters in your variable name. Use them. But when you only have one page and you're trying to get a student to understand everything and ha give it more meaning than just using X and Y, um, abbreviations have to happen. So this would be the, the best way to label these boxes, but let's go with what they did um, for theirs, okay? There we are. Okay, so we go with their boxes. And that's the char let zero, char let one. And it says C out in our two letter state abbreviation. So it does a CN. And the first CN, because I think it tells you, okay, it doesn't tell you. Well, we can, we can interpret here what they did. So they used AZ. So the first input they got is A. Z. All right. Then it's asking if. So the so if we look here, it says we well, got to break this down. Okay. So the first question they're asking is, are both of these letters? And that is indicated, that question is indicated by the double and symbol. So both have to be letters before you can result it as true. Okay, this has to happen. Both have to be letters, otherwise for them to be true. But how do we know if what's in the contents are letters? Well, we use the library up here so they give you a library here, is alpha, and you put in, um, the, the C is the variable name. So you come down here, and you can see that they have the is alpha let zero. Okay, so, is alpha and we put the contents of the box in there. So first we ask, is alpha, is the contents of this box, is the contents of this box a, a alphanumeric character? And alphanumeric characters in the ASCII table, um, we can do... So you can look up an ASCII table. There's, 
you know, it's well publicized. It's just a matter of finding one that'll give you a screenshot big enough. There we go. So you can see here that the letter, capital letter A, we look here, is the decimal, capital letter A, is the decimal equivalent of 65. And so all of is alpha is doing, since this is an A, is alpha is saying, is 65 in the box? And it comes back and that is true. Okay. Now, is alpha let one and they're asking is the contents of the box equate to a number between 65 and 90 and then lowercase is 97 to 122 and then that returns yep what is contained is a capital Z which is uh, a 90 and so that becomes a true so let's go back to here so when we come here there's one more question here and so that comes back as true and so now are both of these letters so what's gonna happen is what's gonna come back is a true and a true is a one um, it's actually any character other than zero but when you're using strictly boolean it's a one and so what happens is we have one more issue here because our, our question is, you know, is our folks, the folks, the, the customer, um, by the way, customers are idiots and they don't mean to be idiots, but they really are. Um, you're trying to see, did they input a proper state name? So the thing is, we go back to our ASCII table and you can see that any one of these uh, characters, the plus sign, the forward slash, equals, question mark, caret, all these things are in the ASCII table. So, um, characters or, or customers can hit any character they want, and then it'll ruin your database. So what you want to do is do a data check. So did the, did the customer, did the user input a proper name? So we don't care if they're true. We only care if they're not true. So there's that one little not symbol, which is a single explanation point. And the not symbol turns that one into a zero. And that zero says so our continuation I think I can move this our continuation is if not and we'll just say true and whatever it is we already know what that is are both letters or are both boxes letters so if it's not true that both boxes are letters, then I want you to do this other thing. And this is where, uh, again, condensing is good and it's bad. But for when I write this, I write code out like this, and I do that for maintenance. So C out, you screwed up, all right?
Okay. So if it's not true, if whatever it is is not true, then print this out. So that's what they're trying to say here. All right. Because they were both true. Actually, I don't know what that one does. Because they're both true. Oh, I say it changes color. Yay. Let's do something less interesting. Um, it turned it into a zero, which made the if statement false, which means operations will skip that output. All right. If we go through that again, if we go through this again, oops, we still need that. And you can see here on the exercise, they say, they tried AZ, they tried AZ, they tried MN, and then they tried this one here that says 5X. All right, so I'm going to leave that up there. All right, so we're going to try... So the user put in a five and an X and we're going to evaluate. So the first thing that we're going to do is are both boxes letters. That's what the two and symbol means. You're comparing both. Both have to be true in order to be true. So, in order to evaluate this, though, we have to answer another question, which is down here. Is the box, is the information in the box, let zero, up here, is that a number, or is that a character between these two digits? Is alpha, is alpha. Okay? Those are the alphanumeric, because it's looking for a number. And when we go back to... The ASCII table, right, the character 5 is a 53. So what is stored in there is the number 53. And so, therefore, is alpha, is that between these points? The answer is false. And the thing is, is it does the same thing here. It's looking for X, and X it, it comes back, and we know X is um, 88, which falls between the two, and so that becomes a true. However, right here, it's saying, hey, are they both letters? And we have to report false which is a zero, okay? That's a zero in Boolean. So then we flip everything on the head because we go if not true. Okay, so the zero is modified by this in inversion and the zero is turned into a one. And now if if it's not true, which is true, that's a, that's a one, so therefore that is now true, it will execute this line of code. And that's how that works. All right, so I don't know how to clear a whole page of this. There should be a way. All right, maybe not. All right. 
create new whiteboard. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, let's look at 3131, string with a digit. Okay, now the only difference is between what we're doing and what you're what everything else is going on we're going to walk through this and it says hey um we are going to uh, walk through this code real quick so it says we're using namespace standard which in real code you never do that it wastes memory but um boolean has digit okay so we have a box and it can only have a zero or a one contained in it. A zero being false and one being true. Okay. So we have a box that has, that has, a, has digit. Okay, that's our box. All right. So now CN passcode oh actually sorry I skipped a line just a second I'm gonna put my glasses on I apologize I thought this was all big enough where I could read it but apparently it is not Okay, so a string passcode. So we are making a string, and all a string is is like a palette of boxes. And we really don't know how big that string is. So we created a string which is a palette and we're calling it passcode and to access anything on to access an individual box on the palette we would simply say passcode zero and that would get us to this one passcode and that would get us to that one and so on down the line okay that's how that works so that's how we access the individual boxes in the palette all right so we've created a passcode that holds a string and the string can be any character on the ASCII table and we have a boolean of has digit and now it's saying hey has digit equals false so we're gonna put a, a false in there by default which is actually a zero and then there is nothing in the passcode however there's a c in so here we did the has digit so let me let's review because i'm looking at three different screens here so int main boolean has digit we made the box and the box can only contain a zero or a one and it has a digit and we named that box has digit then we made then we created a palette of boxes and the palette is called passcode and to access any individual box, we have to use its number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We don't have to explicitly say those numbers unless we want to access a certain part of that string. Okay. Now we're supposed to write a solution in here that um, identifies uh, whether or not our... Um, set has digit to true if the three character passcode contains a digit okay so if we do that 
all we have to do is remember and sorry and whatever um, that means both have to be true in order for the whole statement to be true and you can use this multiple times so you know you could say orange lemon and uh, steak it's like hey in order for are all of these a citrus fruit this has to be a citrus fruit this has to be a citrus fruit this has to be a citrus fruit and we're going to get a false Boy, it'd be great if steak was a citrus fruit, but it's not. Okay. But, so the other one that we use is called the or, and we use the, the double pipe for or. Um, if you haven't used that before, it's the shift and the button above the enter key. And so that would be, if we used or on all of these things, instead of the and, then this would evaluate to true because we know this one is true, this one is true, and this one is false. So, but because one of them is true, the whole statement is true. Are one of these um, a citrus fruit, where the other one is, are all of these a citrus fruit? All or one of. So we know we have to use an or statement in here. So is the three character passcode true if the contains a digit? Okay. So uh, a numerical digit is from zero to nine. And again, the, the piece, the computer does not store it as zero to nine. It stores it. Well, anyway, you're, you're you'll, you won't notice that difference. But, so it's looking for a statement. So it's looking to see if passcode, I'll redraw our, is, does passcode contain a digit? So we know that they are going to have any number of digits. Um, let's see here. So they don't tell us. Let's, let's just use three. Let's, let's use a, a three just for simplicity's sake. So the first thing we want to do is uh, does passcode, does our box passcode contain a digit and we need to ask that because we can't ask a string we can't evaluate the whole thing we have to do it individually so we have to break that down passcode is the palette but we want to know does the passcode box zero contain a digit does passcode box one contain a digit does passcode box two contain a digit so we're asking three questions and if we go back and evaluate what is the the item here that so has digit to true if the three character passcode contains a digit so how do we join all these together? Well, we do it like we did up here. So we would do um, passcode zero or passcode one or passcode Two. Okay. However, this is just accessing the variable. Okay. This does not evaluate what's in that variable. So 
what we have is we go up here and we have these commands that say, is it a digit? Okay. So we use this code, is digit, passcode, zero. And then we do the same thing for all of those. I don't have room in here to write all that. So now we have, these are ors, and now we are evaluating this specifically. So let's walk through this. Does the palette containing box zero, the palette passcode containing box zero contain a digit? And it's either true or false. So let's, let's figure out, um, we did a x two. So when we evaluate, we look in box zero of the palette passcode and we say uh, false. That is not a digit. Then we look in palette passcode box one and we say, hey, what's in there? It's an X. Is that a digit? No, that's not a digit. Then we look in palette passcode box two for the contents and it just so happens that the two it, it, these two are not related it just happens to be I used a two so but is that a digit and it is true so or or so if any of these are true then for us to evaluate we are doing this if and if is automatically if true okay that's when anytime you put an if in there it's looking to see if true if uh, box zero box or box one or box two Um, true. Okay, so we know yeah, green is fine. Uh, so we know this is false. This is false. This is true. So this is all true and whatever is true gets executed. And so our statement, we go back to the question again. Our statement is, has digit to true if the, okay, so now we want to set our box, has digit is equal to true. And that's it. So it, if this statement is true, which it is, because there's one true if true, execute this code. If not, if it's true, execute this code. If it's not, just skip everything. And that's how we write that code. Hopefully this helps. Um, you really have to break down these problems in order to um, um, get the correct answer, that, which is programming anyway. Um, the, the process of programming 90% of the time when students make an error, it's a thinking error and not a coding error. They know how to use the code correctly, but they don't understand how to break down a problem into its constituent parts. All right, so hopefully that helps while these notes, they would not stand on their own, hopefully between the audio and the notes that this solution makes sense. If you have any other questions, please let me know. I'm happy to make as many videos as you guys need. 
uh, to understand the material. Um, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you.